Hello my fellow mates. Today I want to start the video with an insight on three Indian stocks. Adani Green Energy, a large cap, Borosil Renewable, a mid cap and Geetha Renewable, a small cap. The earning per share of Adani Green Energy is Rs 9.20. The industry price to earning ratio is around 20. It means the price of this stock shouldn't be more than Rs 9.20 that is the EPS multiplied by the industry price to earning ratio that is 20. This comes to around Rs 184. This should be the maximum trading price of Adani Green Energy. But those of you who already trade knows the actual price of this stock. It's trading at a whooping Rs 1869. So this stock is overvalued not twice or thrice but 10 times. Similarly with Borosil Renewable, the EPS is Rs 0.86. Since this company does other business also, the industry average is little higher that is 40. So the trading price should be around Rs 34. But this stock is also trading at an insane price of Rs 494. Again overvalued by around 14 times. And don't even talk about this stock. The EPS is Rs 0.36. Industry PE ratio is again 20. So the trading price shouldn't be more than Rs 7.20. But hold your heart because this share is trading at a nonsensical price of Rs 158. Again overvalued by 22 times. So all these stocks are overvalued by 10 to 20 times. And trust me, I've used a very liberal formula. It's much more overvalued than this. But by now, you must have realized what sector I'm talking about. Yes, the renewable energy sector. And it's not only these three stocks. Just type renewable in your broker account and pick any stock. Every stock is trading at a highly overvalued price. And one of the spaces which is doing very well is renewable energy. Uh, we were just talking about how names like Inox Wind are up almost 25% this week. Tata Power is at a new high. JSW Energy is at a fresh 52-week uh, high. The renewable energy ecosystem in India has been growing and growing quite fast. Uh, wind energy will double in the next four years from say 40-45 gigawatts to around 80-85. Our solar will triple in the next three years from about 70 to 220. Uh, and this is a space where you can pick and choose whatever you like. But why? Why people are so optimistic about renewable energy sector? Is it really worth the hype or is it just a bubble? Well, to find the answer, we must understand the idea behind the International Solar Alliance because it is the protagonist of the story. So without wasting any more time, let me give you a structure or mind map we'll be following in today's video. Firstly, we'll get to know how International Solar Alliance came into existence. Next, we'll understand how this alliance is going to transform the energy sector through two mega projects, OS, OW, OF, and Star C. Lastly, we'll understand how solar energy is going to impact Indian companies and economy. So let's begin. Friends, let me tell you a story that why more than 100 countries came together to form an international solar alliance. From the early 1970s, the world began to realize that the climate change is not an individual country's problem. It's a global phenomenon where every country has to come together with a common blueprint and action plan to bring some material change. So a global summit was organized known as United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development or simply Earth Summits. The objective of the summit was that every member country will come together every 10 years to discuss global actions on climate change. And among all the Earth summits happened till date, the Paris summit held in 2015 is considered one of the most historical Earth summits where all the countries signed the Paris Agreement. And it's very important that you understand the core element of this agreement because that is the fundamental of International Solar Alliance. On 12 December 2015, around 195 countries decided that they will limit the global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius. In simple words, right now the global temperature is 1.36 degrees Celsius warmer than the pre-industrial era, that is from 1850s to 1900. Now in the Paris Agreement, everyone decided that it shouldn't cross more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. It's a very ambitious project. It's only possible when all the countries achieve net zero carbon emission by 2050. Net zero simply means if you are adding one molecule of carbon in the air, we must remove one at the same time to keep the carbon in the air to net zero. And if you want 1.5, then by about 2040, the planet has to move to a fossil fuel economy, free economy. Now, why don't you tell me, 
we know hundreds of ways to add carbon in the air but how can we remove carbon from the air think about it there are very few ways to do it and it takes time the easiest and the simplest way is to plant more trees which will absorb carbon from the air but removing carbon from the air will be useless if we do not reduce addition of carbon through the use of fossil fuels that's why countries are rushing to switch to renewable source of energy and that's where the hero of the story international solar alliance comes into picture in the same summit since every country had the same goal to achieve net zero india proposed why can't we do it in alliance it's much efficient to do it together than doing it individually and interestingly the host nation france immediately came forward to become the co-partner of the initiative and within few months around 100 nations joined the alliance including major countries like australia usa and japan the international solar alliance coverage has been suddenly been sought to be widened to cover the whole globe the international solar alliance which of course is something that india has been really championing from the very outset india and france are jointly co-hosting the first international solar alliance summit in new delhi to promote the solar energy and and related project national solar alliance is a key initiative to accelerate global action against climate change through the promotion of solar energy so what's so special about this alliance and how is this going to transform the energy sector of all the member nations but before answering that question first i want to ask you a one question the first solar panel was invented in 1883 then why after so long and almost depleting the entire fossil fuels now we are getting so passionate about the solar energy well most of you have guessed it very right it's only very recently that the price of solar energy has become affordable enough to be replaced by other sources of energy let's look into the energy cost graph to understand it better this one is the year axis and this one is the cost per megawatt hour axis and these are the costs of various sources of energy in last two decades let's look at solar now in the beginning of the last decade solar energy was the costliest source of energy above every other but in the next four years it became cheaper than gas nuclear and coal and by now it has become the cheapest source of energy with less than 50 dollars per megawatt hour of energy so what happened in these two decades that it became cheaper than every other source of energy well the answer is very simple my friends we innovated we scaled we created efficient supply chains created huge and massive manufacturing units of solar panels and this alliance will make all this process more efficient and reliable so that even the poorest of the nation can afford sustainable energy This is one of the example of our commitment to Vasudev Kutumbakam. Let's look at two major projects of ISA to understand it better. Firstly, one sun, one world, one grid. The idea behind this is very simple but very ambitious. The project aims to connect all the sunshine nations under one grid. Sunshine nations lie within the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn as they receive the highest amount of sunshine throughout the year. The core principle is the sun never sets. It means if there is night in one part of the world the grid can transfer electricity from the day part of the world to the night part so every part of the world will continuously get electricity without interruption so for example when it is dark in east asia it's still light in india you are having solar electricity if there was a cable between india and east asia that solar electricity could be provided to east asia similarly when it's dark in india the solar electricity from the middle east should come here what this needs is a global interconnection this will incur heavy investment initially but it will be divided among the member countries and it will be much cheaper compared to storage of energy just imagine if a country is storing solar energy for the whole country for the whole night and every night this project will be much more cost efficient compared to storage of energy the prime minister called for connecting solar energy supply across borders giving the mantra of one world one sun one grid india's ground breaking energy initiative the one sun one world one grid project this ambitious endeavor unveiled at the cop26 summit in 2021 aims to forge a transnational energy grid connecting nations across the globe the second major project under isa is star c that is solar technology and application resource center the idea behind this is to create standard innovation and training centers across the member states this will ensure no country is wasting time in the same innovation secondly 
everybody is getting standard training means if one gets master degree from star c it will be globally recognized thirdly it aims to create demand in the market through entrepreneurship creating and marketing new solar products and most of all it will be a chain of centers for policy changes across the nations but why india is so proactive towards solar energy how is this going to impact the economic condition of our country well in the same paris summit india pledged to achieve 40% of our country's energy requirement through renewable sources by 2030 but if you see this data from ministry of power we have already achieved 40% target last year itself and 16% of it is coming from only solar this self reliance on energy is substantially reducing the pressure on our economy on the oil imports but the focal point to look here is we are achieving this indigenously in the first half of 2023 india has recorded a substantial 76% drop in the solar module imports from china imports from china plummeted from 9.8 gigawatt in the first half of 2022 to mere 2.3 gigawatt during the corresponding year in 2023 this low dependency on the imports of solar products is making indian companies masters of quality manufacturing of solar products and that too at a very affordable price that's why exports of solar cells and modules from india has gone up to 628 million dollars in april to july 2023 which is 1062% higher than 54 million dollars recorded in the same period of 2022 1062% friends that is more than 10 times now you must be getting the idea why the stock price of the renewable energy companies are so overvalued so the solar dependency is not only helping us to save money in terms of oil imports but also helping us to earn money in terms of solar exports and now with isa in the picture but china is not the part of the alliance it's much easier safer and reliable for the member countries to import solar products from the other member countries like india so now it completely depends upon the indian entrepreneurs on how well we can take benefit from the huge domestic and the international market with that note i'll let you decide whether the renewable stocks of our country is in a bubble or overvalued for a reason so viewers international solar alliance is a huge opportunity for our country and the member nations and india has a significant responsibility as the leader in the success and the failure of this alliance the world is looking up to us that's why i request all the new voters whether you are from the north or the south part of the nation whether you are an entrepreneur from gujarat or supporting sonam wangchuk's environment movement in the east this time when you choose your mp ask them where is the star center in my state why is there no solar manufacturing in my state why is there no incubation center for solar projects make them accountable for their work it is the responsibility of the current generation that international solar alliance does not become a mere promise so that our future generation does not face an environmental crisis jai hind see you again